Alrighty, Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bakaz, Mori Medan, Yahoo, Ben Yashrael. want to welcome you to another broadcast of Living Branch Hebrew Assembly. <clears throat> we uh, thank all of those that have joined in with us. And I know some are still adjusting to the uh, schedule, so I know you'll probably be catching this on YouTube which is fine. That's why I posted out there so that we can um, catch those that might miss it on live streaming because um, we have a lot of followers that go to YouTube. So today is not necessarily going to be a in-depth teaching lesson, but approximately, probably about, I say about 9.30, um, it was like fathers, I heard something in the, in the Ruach and said turning point. I'm like turning point. And then once I heard turning point, he gave me Psalms, uh, 23. So I was like, okay, father, we'll walk this thing out to see what you're talking about. Um, to help those because you have to realize turning points come at decisions. And this particular decision is very interesting. So we're going to look at Psalms 23, maybe from a little different perspective, and try to um, get prophetically what the Father is trying to tell us in this hour for those that are in need of direction. All right, let's pray. Baruch Hashem, Yahuwah, Elohim, Malach HaAlam. Father, thank you. For another Shabbat you have allowed us to see. We ask you, Father, to continue to uh, bear a Let us be a blessing. And we continue, Father, to ask you to lead and guide us as you have done so wonderfully. We submit ourselves to your will. We ask you to show us and give us direction in the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. So, I just ask that you follow along patiently uh, with me. We're going to look at a few points. But the first thing I'm going to do, um, we're going to read the whole psalm through. And then we're going to come back and talk about it. So hopefully this is large enough where you can see it. If not, I'll make it a little bit larger. So I want everybody to be able to see. Okay, and this is a Psalm of Daoud or Dawid or David or David. <laughs> okay, first verse. Yahuwah is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth me, but he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Yahuwah forever. <laughs> okay, so, we know that he said here, that this is what Daoud said, Yahuwah is my shepherd. Okay, and you'll find that pretty much standard, I shall not want. Now, there are a couple of places that I wanted to um, just take you so that you could um, just, you know, get an idea when we talk about when we talk about this shepherd thing. And let's let's go over. I took you to a different um, search bar here. So we can look at it. Let's look at Psalms 78 verse 52. It says, but, but made his people to go forth like sheep. And guided them in the wilderness like a flock. 
Okay, and let's look at Psalms 80 verse 1. Give ear, O shepherd of Yashriel Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, though thy dwell between the cherubims shine forth. Now, one that I particularly um, like is over in Isaiah 40, verse 11, where it says, He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lamb with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. And there are many more um, that we could look at even in, in the Brit Hadashah. I just want to kind of, you know, let you see the character of the shepherd. It says, Now the Elohim of peace that brought again from the dead our sovereign, Yahusha, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of everlasting covenant. So, the shepherd we know is the Mashiach. And one of the things you have to decide as a turning point for you is you have to affirm that he is your shepherd. Now, if he is your shepherd, that means there are certain things because you got to remember how a sheep acts. Keep in mind, this is a turning point. So you, your turning point is going to be, you make up your mind that this, he really is my shepherd and I'm going to let him do his job and I'm going to do mine. So, because he's your shepherd, you know the first thing is, you shall not, what, want. Now, let's look here. Because one, when we were um, in uh, Israel, during our last visit, one of the things, um, Moray Lamai Yahoo and I, were we went out, to like the desert um, and we just decided you know we we uh, were going to pray so we we found a place to pray that was all isolated and we prayed and after we finished praying and got up a shepherd on a donkey passed by and the shepherd waved he kept going and he kept, he kept on, he was riding the donkey, he kept going. And the herd had sheep and goat. But what was interesting, the shepherd kept riding. He never looked back to see what the sheep were doing. And the sheep instinctively um, were following him when they saw us. Cause I mean, they passed literally, um, it had to be no more than about 20 feet from us. They turned, they looked at us. They looked, they looked for a little while. Then they looked and saw him that he was still riding. And what did they do? They, they kept following. So even though they looked our way, say, who are these guys? I'm just, you know, speculating. Then they kept following the shepherd. The shepherd just can't, kept going. And they like, they came out of nowhere. So if you're going to be his sheep, you have to follow him instinctively. You have to keep, keep yourself. Where is he going? Where is he leading me? Because what happened to a lot of our, our Hebrews, they're leading themselves, you know, they're not waiting on him to lead. They're actually leading themselves. So let's look at the part where it says, I shall not want. Now, um, I'm just going to give you another place, which is Psalms 34, verse 9, where it says, O fear Yahuwah, you his saints, 
for there is no want to them that fear him. In verse 10, the young lion do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek Yahuwah shall not want for any good thing. So if he's a shepherd, you know, you've got to make sure that you're seeking him and that you fear him because he's the one providing for you. He has your best interests at heart. So sometimes when we go through things, and we're going to see this later on in this psalm, that we often forget that he knows what's best for us. And some of the places that he leads us is not always, um, quote unquote, the ideal conditions. Okay, then let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Almost sounds like a reiteration. But seek you first the kingdom of Elohim or Elohim and his righteousness. Remember the kingdom and then it talks about his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So when you seek him, the kingdom and his righteousness, you are part of his flock. He's going to make sure you're provided for. Now, here's the part that most, most people grasp onto. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Okay, the green pastures part. And he leadeth me beside the still waters. So, automatically they think that everything is going to be always good. Because he said he's going to lead me to green pastures. The key word there is he's leading you to the green pastures. So you don't know what you're going to have to go through to get to the green pastures. And you don't know what other waters you might see to get to the still water. So you have to make sure that you're following him. That he's leading you. And I bring it back again that you're not leading yourself. Okay. So this is very key because we have a lot of people leading themselves. Now, let's look at a, just a couple of references for pasture. Uh, let's look at um, Ezekiel chapter 34 verse 4. Okay, and, uh, excuse me, verse 14, where he says, I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel share the, shall, shall their foal be. Sh there they shall lie in a good foal and in fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. Well, let me give you, you know, if you ever been to Israel, those mountains are rocky terrain. It's easy to fall off into a gully. It's easy to hurt yourself. So when he's leading you to where you need to be, which is good pasture, it doesn't mean that you're not going to see rough terrain on the way. The whole key to it is that he's leading you. To it. So he leadeth me beside the still waters. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. Well, sometimes he well, he has to take you to where those green pastures are. Because you notice when when the shepherds in Israel are feeding their flock, they take them out into the terrain and they have to find where there's good feeding. They don't just stay in one place, so they move about. When those when when they finish feeding there, then they have to go to another place. So he don't just take you one place and you just stay there. Once you've got the nourishment that you need from the place that you're at, 
He might have you at a different place the next day. The whole key is you have to follow him. Okay, and let's look at um, John or Yehuchanan, the 10th chapter and the 9th verse. He says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So he knows where these pastures are. But you can only get these pastures through him. Okay, let's go back over here. So, third verse. He restoreth my soul. Okay, he restoreth. Shub or shuv. He causes my soul to return to me. Then, because, how, how is that? Because I'm in the green pastures. I got the still water. It restores my soul. But that only comes from following him. Then notice, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So, you can find all kind of places. Um, let's look in Psalms 5 verse 8. Let's talk about talk a little bit about he lead. Now, this is what the psalmist is saying. Lead me, O Yahuwah, in thy righteousness because of my enemy. Make thy way straight before my face. So, he's asking him to lead him. You have to want to be led, not make your own way. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. That's Psalms 31 verse 3. Uh, we'll look at a couple of more um, for lead. Psalms um, 139, verse 10. It says, Even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Then go down to verse 24. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. Um, and we'll give one more over in Isaiah 49, 49 verse 10. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them even by the, the springs of water shall he guide them. So that brings refreshing. And notice that here it talks about pastures um, up in a couple of verses up where it says they shall feed in the way and their pasture shall be in high place in all high places. So we have got to make sure that we're letting him lead us, you know, because oftentimes it, it's dysfunctional for when you reverse the order for the bride to try to lead the each. That's not how it works. In his realm, nor in our realm. So, we're the sheep. The shepherd leads the sheep. When the sheep start to try to lead the shepherd, that's when the wolf has his day. 
think about it. I love watching um, Animal Planet, Discovery Channel, you know, all those National Geographic. When, when you have a herd of animals, because they all stick together for protection, okay? Having the shepherd, man, that makes it even better because the shepherd protects us. But notice that the what the lions, the hyenas, the cheetahs, all those different animals, if an animal comes out of the herd and is separated, they're more prone to attack. So you've got to make sure you stay in the ranks. Don't get ahead of the shepherd. Okay, let's go back over. Now, this is the part that I'm considering the turning point. Because so many think that every place you that he's going to lead you to walk is going to be green pastures and still water. But that's not the case as the psalm continues on. Because right in there, you, you get where he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Why would we have to worry about that valleys of the shadows of death if it wasn't a part of where the shepherd might have to take us through to get to the next place that has still water and that has green pastures. So I find that very interesting because many people think that you come over here, everything's just supposed to be hunky-dory. But it's not the case. And if you follow closely behind him, you'll be able to make it through the valleys, the shadows of death, and you will understand the function of the shepherd that he is to get you to the next place that has still water and that has green pastures so that you can restore your soul. So let's look at Psalms. We're just looking at another place here. And 1 Psalms 138 verse 7. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of thy enemy, and thy right hand shall save me. What is the function of the shepherd? It is to protect and cause the flock to flourish. But if the flock refuses to follow the shepherd, then that protection is not guaranteed. It is not guaranteed. So we have to make sure um, because between the mountains are deep valleys. And to get where there may, may be another green pasture, he's going to have to take you through those valleys and when you go down in the valley some translations say the valley of deep darkness the sun might be in a position where in the valley it is dark so there could be fear but because you know who's is there with you guiding you you will be able to say, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And what's there with you? His rod and his staff, they comfort me. So let's look at that part. So I, I didn't want to go too long today. 
Um, it says, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So if you remember, the shepherd's staff has a hook on it. And that hook is to pull you out of uh, any holes or any place you might fall. Okay, let's look at Micah, the seventh chapter, 14 verse. Feed thy people with thy rod and the flock of thy heritage, which dwell solitarily in the wood. In the midst of Carmel, let them, Carmel is up in Haifa, uh, Mount Carmel, in Haifa, um, in Israel. Haifa is above Tel Aviv. And feed them, and let them feed in Bashon and Gilead, and Gilead, as in the days of old. So what does that rod do? That rod is designed to feed. To help. Then, then we know what a staff does. So all these things are designed for correction. If the sheep start to get out of line, that staff can correct you and put you back in line. Now notice here again. This doesn't paint a pretty picture. Thou preparest a table or meal before me in the presence of my enemy. So my enemy is right there. But the function of the shepherd is to protect. If you ever get a chance, read the read Daoud and what he talked about, what he did for the flock. And this is right before he went up before the uh, Philistines. And he talked about how this Philistine is no different than the bear and the lion that came up against the flock that he was protecting. So he had great concept of how a shepherd protects. And thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. This is right in the presence of the enemy. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Yahuwah forever. So because I'm in his house, I'm following his rules. So goodness and mercy are going to follow me. So your turning point, Miss Bacaz, is going to be when you realize just how much of a shepherd he is. And I have to ask you, and I'm not, um, I'm just, you know, trying to give you direction. Are you letting him shepherd you like you're supposed to? Or are you leading yourself? You have to ask yourself that. Because your turning point is going to be when you realize that he's the shepherd and you're the sheep. We are the people and the sheep of his pasture. Isn't that what the psalmist said? The, the psalmist made it quite plain who we are. And we can find, let's go there. I want you because you have to know who you are. Look here in Psalms 100. Where did I see that? I think it was in verse 3. Know you that Yahuwah, he is Elohim. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. So he has the ownership position. So he should be the one directing us, leading us. But it seems 
that many folks take matters into their own hand and they want to lead him and tell him what he should be doing. When you need to be seeking him, asking him to show you what to do. So that you can be in line with scripture. Now, different people have different opinions, but I'm telling you, your turning point is going to be when you realize just how much of a shepherd he is and who you are, his sheep. And his function and your function. And where he leads you and why he's trying to get you there. Some of you are going through things right now because he's trying to get you to the still waters and the green pastures. But he's got to take you through the valley to get you there. And you're crying, woe is me, instead of realizing what he's trying to do in your life. And when you see what he's trying to do, that's going to be a turning point for you because you realize, oh man, he's trying to get me to a green place, to some still waters. And he's trying to make sure that I am doing what I need to do as a sheep, keeping me in line. See, one of the problems with a lot of uh, with a lot of folks, they don't want to be shepherded. They just out here running around in the wilderness, doing their own thing, kicking up their heels, you know, eating whatever they want. They don't want to be shepherded. They don't turn into wild sheep, goats, you know. They just all over the place. But he's going to separate the sheep from the goat. So you got to make sure that you have a sheep mentality, that you are doing what you're supposed to do as his sheep. Staying in the flock, making sure you're keeping your eyes on the shepherd and let him lead you. It sounds simple, I know. But trust me, it ain't as simple as it seems. So I know this lesson is going to um, help somebody. And the only reason I know that is because right after he gave me turning point in Psalms 23, somebody emailed me and in their email, that's, that's a um, psalm that they actually quoted that they wanted you know, basically, um, they wanted to serve you who and be in the right place and have a pure heart because they wanted to see him. And then they put Psalms 23, you who is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I'm like, OK, Father, you, you must want me to teach this lesson uh, for sure, because somebody out there needs it. So I was like, no problem, Father. You know, this this is not my show. This is your show. You know, you you the one that gives direction and instructions, not not me. You know, I want to be led by you. So that's where we're at, Miss Baka. So I, I hope you take heed. And I hope this lesson um, has has been something that will help you and be instrumental. So we're gonna pray. Um, I didn't even get to, okay, where we get, let's go back over here. I was at the end of the slide. Okay. So let's pray, uh, just for your walk, your understanding. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah, Elohim Malach HaAlam. Father, we say, Toda Rebah, for this word. I'm asking you, Father, to... Make this word a turning point for someone out there. They've been functioning the capacity. They've been shepherding their own life. But Father, I pray that this turning point will let them see that they are your people 
and that they are the sheep of your pasture and that they must follow the good shepherd that you've given us. Father, help them to see examples in scripture. Give them revelation. Show them, Father, that the shepherd is functioning to get them to still water, to get them to good pasture. And some days he's going to have to cause them to go through valleys and go through places that are rough just to get them to the places that have the still water, that has the good pastures, where their soul can be restored or revived. Father, I thank you because this is going to resonate in somebody's spirit. It's going to click and they're going to understand that they've been making decisions instead of searching it out and seeking it out through you. Father, I thank you. I say toda reba for what you're going to do for your people. Father, you're gathering us and you're causing us to see and understand. And I pray, Father, that our hearts would continue to be tender and that we would continue to operate in the humbleness and that humility that we need as a child to make it into the kingdom. Take pride out of our, out of our lives. Take arrogance out of our lives. Take everything that's not like you out of our lives, Father, so that we, Father, can be a help to others, so that we, Father, can be an example to others. When they look at us, they can see Torah operating in us like it's supposed to be. Father, Toda Reba, for all of your servants out there, for all of my Mishpaka, thank you, Toda, for them. Be with them. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha. Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. Amen. So if you have prayer requests, you can send those to me at prayer at living-branch.org. Okay, and of course you know about the Hebrew Ten Commandments. Um, if you want to get that, um, it down here's the web address down here at the bottom. We also have the Hebrew Passover story. Because Passover is going to be coming around real quick, Miss Baka. Um, we're already, you know, time is like it's moving and accelerating. Now, we've, we've sent out quite a few bookmarkers this week. Um, there's no fee for bookmarkers. If you can make a donation, hallelujah. If you can't make a donation, don't worry about it. Still request your bookmarkers. And I put here, this is the redesign. We try to simplify the front. Um, and we just put it on the back, the resources, which is living-branch.org and the path to yahuwah.com. So we take them to yahuwah.co because we want them to know the Father's name. Because that is very crucial. And then we walk them through how to te keep the ten, ten Commandments. Not just the Ten Commandments, but all of the commandments that pertain to us. Of course, if you would like to be um, help us in our efforts, here's our mailing address, here's our PayPal. And this is our online giving, which will bring you here. This is so you'll know what it looks like uh, in case you decide to give so that you know you're not going to some fake website. So uh, I wanted to show you one other thing um, before I let you depart um, let's bring here it's gonna bring up Google of course but I just wanted to show you something we added to the website and we'll be constantly updating so if you see here we've added a link here immersion locations this is to help people that are trying that are looking for Immersion. Now, the list is not complete. We're still gathering information. So when you click on it, it's going to tell you the different states that we have people that can immerse, that believe in Yahuwah, that believe in Yahusha. So um, some places you won't see emails. We're still working on getting all the email addresses. So what you would do if you need immersion and you have an area close to you, you would contact that Moray or that brother because we do have some brothers that we've trained to do immersions also. And they'll set up an immersion for you. So 
this is just so you can see and of course here it says this is this list is being updated so please be patient as we continue to add to the list of more rays and brothers that can do immersions so here here you have it so I'll be um, I'm still waiting on some to send me their email addresses and stuff so it's right here on um, living-branch.org immersion locations so we will try to continue to update that and as we train and get more um, brothers and more raised that knew how know how to do it uh, we will um, put them on the list all right Miss Baca um, this is don't forget at 4 p.m. Maury Lamont's going to be doing a Shabbat lesson um, He's doing doing a great job on the lesson, so let's make sure we tune in to the path to yahuwah.com and check it out. So if you need anything else, you know, shoot me an email at living branch excuse me, at info at living branch.org. And this is Moray Madad Yahoo saying unto you, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>